Fournette. Fournette goes airborne. He's in. Touchdown, Jaguars. Tip and intercepted by Ramsey to close it out. It's over. The Jacksonville Jaguars have pulled off the upset of the playoffs. What is going on, everybody? It is Treeb from Treeb Talks here. And, you know, usually here on the channel on Tuesdays, we go over the game. We talk about five things we learn, but I think there's more of a pressing issue um, amongst the Jaguars and amongst Jaguar fans. You know, a lot of people these last two weeks have given up on Blake Bortles or have given up on the team entirely, and they are entering full-pledged panic mode so what we're going to do today is we're going to compare last season to this season through the first six weeks and at the end of the video we are going to determine if jacksonville should hit the panic button so without further ado ladies and gentlemen i am Treve from bigjreport.com and this is should the jacksonville jaguars be panicking First, what we are going to be doing is we are going to be talking about the six games we played in the 2017 season. Compare them to the games we played in the 2018 season. Then we're going to go over Blake Bortles' stats through six games last year, through six games this year, as well as comparing Leonard Fournette's first six games, uh, comparing them to TJ Yeldon's uh, first six games with the Jags. We are not going to be doing any receiving stats. And then at the end of this video, as well as uh, defensive stats, forgot to mention that, we'll also be going over that. And then after that, we're going to summarize it, talk about if the Jaguars right now should be panicking. So, let's compare week one of the 2017 season. This is really the start of Saxonville and when the Jaguars really put themselves on the map with a 10-sack performance against the Texans. Blake did struggle a little bit, but it was still a dominant victory. So, this defense showed that it could carry Blake Bortles this season, and that's what it did a lot throughout the season. And this week was just a prime example of that. And week one this season, we had an average win against the New York Giants. If there wasn't a muff punt or maybe a Miles Jack pick six, this might not have been a win for the Jags. So again, this defense proving it could bail Blake Bortles out in hard times. And that's going to be a trend that you see uh, diminish more and more as we talk about the 2018 games. Coming in in week two, we had a crushing loss to the Tennessee Titans, which we will get to for the 2018 season because that happened again. Week two this year, a great culture win for the Jags to beat New England. Um, week two, just, you know, beat them, beat them in every facet, just get out coached by them. And I mean, us out coach them and out play them uh, all over the field. It was a great culture win against New England. And this is really when Jags fans were over the top thinking this is the year we make the Super Bowl. This is the victory we needed as a team to take this next step. But everything from there goes downhill. Week three for the Jags was a great victory against Baltimore in London. Uh, <clears throat> five turnovers for Joe Flacco in that game. Another dominant defensive performance. Blake Bortles tossed three touchdowns to Mercedes Lewis. Week three this year was the bone-crushing loss uh, to the Tennessee Titans. So, you know, we always have one of those early on in the season. Uh, this year just happened to come in in week three. <laughs> Coming in in week four, we lost to the Jets in overtime. A truly worse team than us. We go out there, we shit the bed in a trap game, and lose to the New York Jets. Week four this season, we go back there and we dominate the Jets, making sure that last year was nothing but a fluke. And this culture still seems to be riding high. It looks like the Jags still have Super Bowl aspirations, and they still have what it takes to make it to the Super Bowl but the last two weeks of this season is really what has been killer for the Jaguars. Now last year, week five, who could forget, we took on the Pittsburgh Steelers. A dominant victory, 181 yards rushing for rookie running back Leonard Fournette as the Jaguars came out on top of the Pittsburgh Steelers 30-9. At that time, a very good culture win for the Jacksonville Jaguars. And then heading into week number five of this season... We played another dominant AFC team, but this time around, we get straight embarrassed. Um, Patrick Mahomes, the, ten the Kansas City defense, went out there, put together an impressive game in order to beat the Jaguars uh, at Arrowhead. So a great win by Kansas City in this one, and the Jags struggled uh, to get anything going. And then week six, we lose to the better team in the Los Angeles Rams, where the first play of the game was a kickoff return 
for a touchdown, and then Leonard Fournette quickly answered by a rushing touchdown of himself in back-to-back -back succession. But after that, the Jaguars just could not get it done. There was a blocked punt, <clears throat> and the Jags just were not the better team on that day, which is pretty similar to last week. We were dominated by the Dallas Cowboys, and the Dallas Cowboys went out there with a game plan and looked like they were just statistically and overall a better team. Although on paper, it did not seem like that was the case. The Cowboys still went out there, put together an impressive game, and beat the Jacksonville Jaguars. So through that whole discussion of all the games last year, we still did go 3-3. Three and three. But the 3-3s three and threes are totally different. Look at the 2017 season, a dominant victory over Houston, a crushing loss to Tennessee, a loss to the Jets in overtime, a great win against Baltimore in London. They dominate the Steelers, and they lose to a better team. So it's off and on, off and on. The Jags last year did not lose two games in a row. This year, an average win against the Giants, a great culture win. For the Patriots and also you could say the Jags didn't win two games in a row last year and the Jags managed to do that here in 2018 beating the Giants and the Patriots and then they of course had their crushing loss to Tennessee they crushed the Jets struggle and struggle to get two losses in a row so two things that the Jags team in 2017 couldn't do uh, the Jags managed to do they lost two in a row and they also won two in a row as well with obvious glaring issues in those losses and obvious glaring strengths in those wins now let's dive in to Blake Bortles the man everybody wants to talk about through six games of the 2017 season Blake Bortles tossed for 1073 yards eight touchdowns in five interceptions still not a great uh, touchdown to interception ratio his touchdown to interception ratio this year is actually worse throwing nine touchdowns alongside eight interceptions the four interception game uh, against Kansas City did not help but he has almost he has 601 more yards than he had last year at this time 674 and he's had a couple two or two or three yeah three now uh career passing yards through six weeks one against the jets then another one i mean one against new england one against the jets and then one against the chiefs though the chiefs one wasn't pretty throwing the four interceptions obviously those are still progression marks for blake uh to throw a lot of yards something that we really did not think he could do we really thought he was just a guy that just went out and handed the ball off now let's talk about the rushing yards. Leonard Fournette in six weeks last season had 386 yards rushing. TJ Yeldon, his stats a little bit skewed. He has 299 yards rushing. I say a little skewed because, you know, throughout the weeks he had to share a little bit of time with Corey Grant. And then week one, and uh, week, yeah, week one, he had to share a little bit of time with Leonard Fournette as well. But still, 299 yards rushing from TJ Yeldon, who is not as a superior back as Leonard Fournette is still really, really impressive, and I think those are still good numbers to be had. Now, the glaring issue, I think, for the Jaguars is the defense. You look at last year, the incredible year this team had, 23 sacks alongside 10 turnovers, which is just an incredible number to have through that span. And this year, they have a measly 14 sacks and 3 interceptions. Now, that begs the question... Of the video, should the Jaguars hit the, the panic? short answer to the question of should the Jaguars panic is no. The Jaguars still have good players that are putting up good numbers. And if you look at some of the positive sides in 2018, I think the receiving core has drastically, drastically improved. I think D.D. Westbrook has stepped up in big moments. Keelan Cole as well. He has struggled dropping the ball. But, you know, he's still a reliable guy. Though we lost Marquise Lee, there's a lot of adversity facing this Jaguar team that I think a lot of fans need to step back and realize great teams face adversity really, really well. And the Jags need to face adversity uh, early on in the season to be successful later on in the season. There's a lot of injuries. There's a lot of guys that are out there playing banged up all the time, like Calais Campbell. And a lot of teams are also scheming for this Jaguar defense. They've had a whole offseason to really t look at the tape and see what they did 
throughout 2017 and now see what they have done through 2018 no one was ready for what the Jags had to offer in 2017 a team I like to compare them to this year is the Cleveland Browns the Cleveland Browns currently lead the league in interceptions and I believe they're only a couple of sacks away from leading the league in sacks as well that Cleveland defense is balling out and not a lot of people know how to game plan for it because they were not on that level last season that's kind of how the Jags are this year but now they're finding a way to game plan for this Jacksonville Jaguar defense. And that is a coaching issue as well. These coaches need to realize that what they are doing is getting scouted out and it is not working. And them as coaches, they need to meet and they need to make sure that they are mixing things up to make sure the Jaguars have the best chance at ceiling victory. We are currently 3-3 three and three heading into the season. The next couple of weeks, we have the Houston Texans in a must-win game. Philadelphia in London is where we play our best football. And then the 1-5 Indianapolis Colts. And then we play the Pittsburgh Steelers on Sunday night. There is a couple of hard games on there and a couple of must-win games as well. We will see what kind of team the Jaguars are in the second half of the season, especially coming up to the bye week and after the bye week as well. I don't think, I think it's way too early for the Jaguars to be hitting that panic button. And it took a couple of days for me to really take in this Dallas Cowboys loss for me to realize that. So in my best Aaron Rodgers impression, R-E-L-A-X, Jaguar fans, the Jacksonville Jaguars, let's just sit back and relax and let the coaches do what they need to do to take this team back to the promised land. And that was should the Jacksonville Jaguars hit the panic button for the 2018 season. What'd you guys think? Leave your comments down below. Don't forget to check the links down below as well. Don't forget to like me on Facebook at Troop Talks. Follow me on Twitter at Trevin Pixley and follow me on Instagram at Trayvon Pixley. Also, if you are feeling very generous today, go over to patreon.com forward slash Troop Talks and donate. Any amount of money is appreciated and will go all towards making this channel better. Also, if you haven't, click that subscribe button, click the bell icon so you get notified every single time I drop a new video. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. Video. And as always, you guys have a terrific day.